The fourth Sunday of, of Easter, the season of Easter in which we find ourselves, the fourth Sunday is always the Good Shepherd Sunday, where we hear lessons about God's shepherding in Christ the Good Shepherd. Hear now this passage from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. Jesus, speaking to the Pharisees and the disciples, says, I am the Good Shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And this wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand doesn't care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, and I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. Nobody takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Let us pray. Lord, you shepherd us through the valleys of our life. We ask you now, shepherd our minds and our hearts as we meditate and pray together as we work and labor this week. May your word dwell in your people. May it feed your flock. Holy One, bless us mind, body, and spirit, that we might serve you with all that you feed us with. In Christ's name, amen. In my prayer, I mentioned banana slugs. Banana slugs are the second largest gastropod living on the surface of the earth. They are uh, bright yellow and green, sometimes spotted. They inhabit the Pacific Northwest and areas like Northern California where I got to go and visiting Muir Woods. It is always my fervent hope to get to see a banana slug. They are about the size of a small banana. They're about this long. They're about that big around. They, they can be up to 20 centimeters long, so sort of that size. They, uh, they're speedy as slugs go. They can, uh, I can pull about 10 inches a minute. Yeah. Blows the hair back on your slug head. And you can only touch them with your lips. It's true. I know. Don't, I don't touch them with your lips. Don't, don't do that. No. No, banana slugs, though, are... Here, here's the thing. They are, they are somewhat uh, elusive. Uh, they have this wonderful slime coat that numbs the tongues of the predators that might eat them. But they are absolutely critical to your survival. <laughs> Now, there are tribes and delicacies uh, that are recorded that have eaten banana slugs. I don't recommend it. But the reason they matter is because they crawl around in the leaf litter and they suck up all the things that everybody else leaves behind. And they turn it into this incredibly nitrogen-rich food. They spread spores of mushrooms that get spread no other way. And they carry seeds that can't be propagated by any other animal. It turns out that when populations of banana slugs decline, what it tells you is that the rest of the health of the forest is in jeopardy. It tells you that the wolf is at the door, in a way. They are the slimy canary in the coal mine of our environment. When we hiked this week, Last Monday, we had a chance to Tuesday, we went to Muir Woods, which is a nature preserve, one of your national monuments, a, a gift to this country, now 100 years old. Brought to you by the vision of a family that saw in nature all of God's handiwork. And in a quote from John Muir said, nature heals all. The immersion in nature is the way to perfect divine peace. 
And so when the valley was threatened to be dammed and flooded, covering 5,000 year old redwood trees, soaring two, three, and 400 feet above the forest floor and the 10 inch banana slugs. In 1908, they bought it and gave it to the country and Teddy Roosevelt signed it into a national monument. It is a jewel. It is a jewel now set in a setting of increasing degradation, however. Muir Woods and woods like them that used to stretch from the Golden Gate all the way north into Humboldt County now resides in small isolated pockets like the 10 square miles that comprise this one place. It is the last place where redwoods can be seen in an easy drive from a city. It is one of the few places where you can see six banana slugs on a walk. <laughs> Six banana slugs, all slugging their way through the forest floor, sliming up the sea, the, the bed of leaves and needles. They're wonderful. And they are what health looks like. In this world where we are hurt on the inside, you know that hurt people sometimes do hurtful things. We do it to one another. We fail to shepherd our own needs and wants in ways that lay down love for others, as the writer said. We instead shepherd the world as though we were to butcher every single sheep we had. We act as though, instead of being the shepherd, that we are the processors of mutton. But no mutton comes if you do not tend the sheep. The sheep of this world are multifold. They are, they are not just the people and our hearts and minds directed and given to God in service. They are also the intricate web of life in which we exist. We are connected. We are not divorced from nature. We don't live on top of it. We are the slugs. We consume what everybody else leaves behind the bounteous forests and fields, we live off of that. We depend on the air and the water that the forests clean and that the oceans absorb, recycle, and return to us. We are not divorced, but rather in love with this earth. We are connected to it, dependent on it, but we have not been particularly good at being beloved. The sad thing is that places like Muir Woods and other national monuments and parks remind us that we are doing to nature what we have done to each other. Instead of integrating and bringing together and demonstrating a universal love all around us, we have decided to set up reserves. We have made reservations for nature. We have corralled it, we have fenced it, we have outlined it, we have relegated it to only certain places and said, there, I will go there to experience nature. I will go there and be a part of the natural landscape. Do you know how different this is from any other point in human history? Nature wasn't something you went to and bought a ticket for or paid money to or depended on a government for. Nature was when you woke up. Nature was what you rolled over on. Nature was what you ate. It's hard to remember that when everything we ate comes wrapped in plastic or is delivered by a truck or has to be flown in from faraway places. But the slug, as I remind you, reminds us that the wolf is at the door the wolf is at the door environmentally, and Appalachia is one of the worst affected areas. We have forgotten that clean water doesn't know a political party. Clean water doesn't care whether you are young or old or how you voted in the last election. Clean water matters to all of us, and poisoned water will poison us all. 
There are over 400 miles, 400 miles of Kentucky streams we can't drink from or eat the fish from. The wolf is at the door in Appalachia as much as it is in the Pacific Northwest. Bird species that no longer sing here because of habitat destruction and, and people, and people, my friends, who have the highest cancer rates of anywhere in the nation. It's Kentucky. We are well above the average, like by hundreds of deaths per 100,000 of population more than any other state or than the national average. So the question is then, how do we shepherd both ourselves and, each, and the world in such a way that we promote the healing and health, not just of one thing, but of all? There is inspiration, I think. Jesus says, you know, I'm the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. And as I said to the children, I don't think this means that you need to throw yourself in front of a moving bullet in order to lay down your life. Far better that you should build your life and lay it down in such a way that every slug, every mountain bluebird, every, every small protected tree frog has a place that keeps your water and air clean and pure for themselves and for you. Better that we should live our lives so that we reduce our dependence on plastic and preservatives and work at preserving one another, both with the kind of love that is the affection of our heart, but also the kind of love that is the protection of the ability to live. Love takes those many forms. We want to go to romantic love, of course. We want to remind ourselves that love is what you do to the neighbors you like. But Jesus reminds us that love is what you do for people you do not like. Love is what you do for people you don't like. Liking people makes it easy to love them. Of course it does. But in many, many places, Jesus says, well, yeah, sure, but if you love the people who already love you, um, not a lot of effort in that, y'all. Not a lot of actual work involved. If it were easy, everybody would be at it. How do you love the people who don't love you, who you do not like? Because they too need good water, and they too and their children need air to breathe. It's a good question, and it matters. And there are signs of hope. This is what it means to shepherd your life in such a way. You can do for you. Number one, you can do for you. You do you. Reduce your waste. Grow some more food. Get a, get a box. We got 122 of them going out there. Grow some food that you don't have to package, process. One tomato creates a home for a lot of slugs. Trust me. Increase your awareness of how what you do impacts others. That's another way to shepherd, yeah? Just be aware that your actions matter. Just like the kids told us, your actions matter. And while it may seem very, very, very small, the way you internally focus and locate the way of being connected to others in your life changes the way the world can connect to its environment. We can all be more aware. And when we are, let me just give you signs of hope, things change, right? Things change. Even in Kentucky, groups like Kentuckians for the Commonwealth, Sustainable Berea, things like concerned citizens who want more parks or plant flowers or simply get more edible yards, all of these things are signs of change that promote habitat. There are a group of hunters who got together some 50 years ago in order to preserve wetlands so that there would be ducks. And these hunters said, we can't shoot all the ducks, we don't want to, but there will be no place of beauty for these ducks to go if we don't work at it. And so the very people who we think of as, oh, one-sided takers, 
are the ones who exhibit to us the fact that, no, 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 they're part of a circle. We all are. And so preserving wetlands became the aim of Ducks Unlimited, one of the most successful agencies to promote and preserve waterways that are healthy, clean, and good. And you know what's good for ducks? Turns out to be good for you. It turns out to be good for all of us. It turns out to be a really great thing that there are salamanders and ducks and slugs and all kinds of creepy, crawly things that you don't necessarily have to like, but that are part of the web of our lives. The wolf really is at the door, but that doesn't mean we can't lay down our lives and prevent catastrophe. If we, are not, if we are not the masters of this world, we are also not passive in it, nor should we be. Scripture reminds us that we are given stewardship of creation, not for a resource. It's not our Walmart where we just go in and pick what we want off the shelf, leaving the debris behind, but we are partners in creation. Just as shepherds are partners in a way with the sheep. You know, in ancient uh, Palestine, in some cases they still do this, the Badu, they will form a corral, essentially, with a single opening. And the shepherd would sleep in the opening after the evening grazing was over. The sheep would be driven inside, and the shepherds would, and sometimes still do, sleep across the opening. It keeps the sheep from going out, because they don't like to step on squishy bodies of shepherds. But it also means that the shepherd is right at the doorway, knows and hears the first bark of the watching dogs, and can stand and defend the flock at the door. Human beings are shepherds of our world in this way. We are at the doorway and can prevent the dangers that are coming at us fast and furious. We can do it. We have done it. We have to remind people that selling off natural, national monuments is probably not a helpful way to do it. We have to remind each other that it is love that drives good action. Love of neighbor, love of politicians, love of those people we don't like maybe, love of our future generations whom we have not met that must keep us going when it seems easier or more convenient or faster to take what is detrimental rather than what will build us up. We are close to too much destruction. We are too close to losing not individual species, but whole environments where we thrive. There are several psychologists who suggest that it is the way we treat each other that lays a pattern for how we have treated our natural world. So when we treat each other better, as John says in that letter, when we learn to love one another better, I think we will be open and have greater strength to love all that loves us with greater skill, with greater effectiveness, with greater breadth. I want to close with this poem by George Ella Lyon, one of my favorites. It's her one called Prayer. It's a reworking of the Lord's Prayer. George Ella Lyon is a, was Kentucky Poet Laureate for a while, was, uh, has been to Union Church, and has, I know, is known to many of you. She writes this prayer. Our mother, who art in the kitchen, cooking us up, Hallowed may we see all that is your kingdom here, delivered into our hands, your will in children and trees leaping out on earth as if it were heaven. Give us this day bread we could feed the world and snatch us bald-headed if we try to swallow it all. Don't forgive us till we learn it is all forgiving. That salve you've got on the pot on the back of the stove only heals if everybody's got some. And heed us not if we believe you look like us and love us best and gave us the true truth with a license to kill others writ inside. Deliver us from this evil, for it is yours. This kitchen we call universe, where you stir up our favorite treat, the Milky Way, folding deep into sweet 
our little sphere with its powerful glory of rainforests and oceans and mountains in feather boa mist forever. If we don't blow it up, and ever, if we don't tear it down, amen. Ah, women, ah, children, ah, reckon she's about fed up. We better make room at the table for everybody before she yells out and turns our table over, before she calls it off this banquet we've been hoarding, this paradise we aim to save with bombs. The word of the poet and the word of the Lord. Remember, the answer is almost always love. Amen.